Hey guys, Mark Ray here, coming to you from Arctic Norway, and just up in the wilderness at the moment, just doing some scouting for some new locations on an island called Senja. Beautiful part of the world, and I uh, just wanted to share with you a bit of an insight. Uh, I was having a conversation the other day with uh, the guys I'm traveling with, Thomas and Harry, just in regards to uh, whether it's better to buy genuine or non-genuine accessories for your camera gear. So personally, I've used a number of different brands over the years. I've also worked with thousands of photographers on our tours and courses over the last 12 years. And so I've had a lot of experience uh, with different brands and genuine and non-genuine accessories, particularly in two areas. Uh, with the um, camera batteries and also cable releases or remote releases. So they're the two things I wanted to talk about today. So first of all, uh, we'll touch on the remote releases or cable releases. So in regards to those, personally, I was tempted to try some of the non-genuine ones over the years. Obviously, they're a lot cheaper than genuine ones. And so they're very appealing for that reason. And you'll find that when you do buy cameras from camera stores, they'll quite often uh, push you towards uh, the non-genuine accessories. My guess there is that they have a higher profit margin, not 100%, but that is my suspicion. So when it comes to non-genuine gear though, I've just had it break so many times, it's not funny, and it can break very quickly, uh, particularly the, uh, the cable releases. They can break quite quickly and stop working. So there's nothing worse than being somewhere remote, such as Norway, and uh, having something like that break on you. So uh, one example I can give you actually of a genuine accessory is uh, on the D850, the Nikon that I've been using for the last couple of years. I've been using one of their genuine cable releases. Now, just got a car going past there. Uh, nothing too fancy. It's just uh, around about $100 for the cable release, but it is a genuine Nikon one. Plugged straight into the camera. Now with that cable release, over the past couple of years, when I've been set up down quite low on the tripod, uh, particularly shooting seascapes and those sort of areas. I've actually had the, uh, the the end of the cable release where the button is go completely under underwater in salt water at least eight or nine times. Uh, and it still continues to fire just as good as the day I got it. So if that's not, uh, if that's not a not testament to the quality of a genuine accessory, um, I don't know what is. In terms of batteries, getting onto the batteries. Now, batteries are another thing. I recently actually invested in a new Sony system. I've been trialing that up here. I won't go into that too much now. But with my Sony camera, uh, the camera, the guy at the camera store actually did the same thing. He suggested that I, when I was looking at getting some batteries, that I go for the non-genuine ones. Now, for those of you that are aware of uh, the strengths and weaknesses of DSLRs versus mirrorless cameras, you'd be well versed that um, mirrorless cameras, one of the biggest downsides is that the battery life just doesn't compare with digital SLRs. And that's largely because they're running an LCD all the time. Even when you're looking through the viewfinder, they're still using an LCD, uh, running that um, without the actual mirror and viewfinder. So with that in mind, uh, obviously batteries are gonna go uh, be chewed through a lot quicker. So I was told that the new Sony is a lot better than previous ones, which is fantastic. That was definitely appealing to me. Uh, however, they did then suggest that for spare batteries that I go with an aftermarket or non-genuine brand. So when I asked the question, well, you know, obviously uh, we all know that mirrorless cameras uh, struggle with battery power or battery life. So how do the non-genuines compare to the genuine Sony ones? And uh, I was told then that uh, ultimately they hold around 85 to 90 percent of what the genuine Sony's do. So, I mean, ultimately, if you're already struggling with battery power because you're using a mirrorless system, it makes no sense to me to then opt for a battery that has only 85 to 90 percent of the capacity of a genuine Sony battery. So, ultimately, again, in my view, Really, I mean, you're looking at $60 for a non-genuine versus $100 for a genuine. It's definitely worth paying that extra bit of money and knowing that you're getting something that's gonna actually um, hold out on you. It's got that extra battery power, so you, ultimately you need to catch, uh, carry less of them in the field. 
and it's just going to make a lot more sense in the long run. So there's a couple of tips for you guys. Uh, as we go, I'm hoping to share a lot more tips and tricks with you um, on our YouTube channel. And I'll come to you from wherever I am in the world and uh, give you a little bit of insight into um, some of my travels as well. If you're enjoying the content that I'm sharing, please make sure you hit the subscribe button uh, and um, we'll keep doing what we're doing. Hope you're having a great week.